go with me to Genesis chapter 26, and if we get there, we get there. If not, at least you know you opened your Bible today. Genesis chapter 26. Good morning. Have you guys heard the um, or seen the scientific uh, experiment? Uh, you take a frog and you drop him in hot water, and he he jumps out. But if you sit him in water and you turn the heat on and you begin to boil, he will not move. He will stay in the water and literally boil. You're saying, what does that have to do with church? Well, I think if uh, we took this group of folks and those that are If we move this group of folks back 20 years ago and you were in the middle of life and all that you were doing, let's go 30, let's go 40, let's go 50 years ago. Some of you, that's just uh, half your life, but the rest of us, that was like two lives ago. (laughs) For me, it would be one life, because I turned 50 this year. Um, but if you took us, if we were back 50 years ago, and you took us, and when you dropped us in right now, we would go, what in the heck is going on? Uh, we would be like that frog jumping co- quickly out of the water. But since we've been living this whole time, My concern is that we're in boiling water and we don't know it. Our environment has gradually changed. Now, when you're heating up water, it's everything is okay to to, up to 211 degrees, but once 212, quickly it changes. Amen. And so. Uh, a, a little bit, and, and a lot of the same uh, goes and applies to us. Uh, it, I'll, at 211, we're at 211 right now, and everything's okay. But it's fixing to hit 212. And the problem is, people like me have been hollering, it's going to hit 212 for a long time. So even in that, it's going to, it's fixing the boil, 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 it's fixing the boil. You've heard it all your life. Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. But I want you to go And every legalistic scripture in the Bible that you know that irritates you, that you skip over because you don't want to be convicted, for every every thing that's been spoken to you and and you ignore because you don't want to hear it. La, 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 la. All of those things. Go ask God, what does he think about that? But then I want you to just, okay, don't even, don't even, I'm not asking you to change. I just want you to look at all of those and then I want you to go to an event. I want you to go to a high school ball game. I want you to go to, uh, uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the mall. I want you to go to a restaurant. And I want you to have the mindset of everything that's in the Bible. And then I want you to go and look. Not with your blinders that have been on. 
but with everything ripped back and looking at it from the most legalistic point of view that you can. Friday night, I went to the Temple Ball game. I heard the F word more than I hear it from Annette. <laughs> you know you be lying. I know I saw 12 year olds dressed like what used to be on the street corner. Now they just a point and a click away, but that's a whole different message. I saw self-consumed people. Just all about me, all about me, about me. Get some me, some attention. And that was Temple, Texas, down home, Christian, Texas town. Then Saturday night, I went to see the Alabama Crimson Tide. <laughs> Whatever. We're on the screen. We keep seeing Wisconsin going like this, and I look over at Annette and say, double loser. I'm going to beat my son-in-law. I'm going to beat him. Okay, so I'm at the ball game, and there's women there that are wearing stuff that, God, I hate when the young kids come in here because they have to behave. Don't coach me. They're wearing stuff that my wife wears to bed. Now, y'all just went way out of, you need, y'all need prayer is what y'all need. <laughs> but my wife likes to wear my shirts. And she wears a t-shirt that's mine. And it cuts and falls right below the cheeks. Not these cheeks. <laughs> these cheeks. Now, uh, young fellers and young women, that's my wife. And she's a gift from God. And I'm a gift I'm a gift. That's right. That keeps on giving. That's right, baby. And um, even though it's an old t-shirt, I love my gift from God. I'm seeing young ladies that are wearing what is supposed to be a dress that's at that same level. Wearing high heels, going up steps that are not like this, not like this, but are like this. And it was, what is funny, every time they walk up the steps, there's a young man following about five steps behind her. Go figure. It's always the guy. I saw self-consumed. I saw... They had this one area, there was a pit. These girls, they're playing this music and all these girls are drunk as all get out and they're dancing. It's just girls out there dancing and they're dancing provocatively and 
riding and putting on a show. And everybody's hooping and hollering. What used to be in the bedroom, what used to be in a closed room, what used to be in a dark place. See, there's nothing new under the sun. The only thing is, is now we don't care anymore. We do it anywhere and everywhere and however we want to. And we don't know. We're, we're in boiling water and we don't know it. We're in boiling water and we don't know it. Now, there's a shift happening. There's a shift in this church. Things are changing and shifting. If you look around, half the people you don't know anymore, do you? It's like, who is that? And why are they sitting in my seat? (laughs) Do they not know who I am? Oh, my God. Look at them. And what concerns me as a pastor is that you guys here, I'm concerned that you're in boiling water and you don't know. You're my first concern. But the other thing that concerns me is that we're in a shift and we're not discerning the change. And what I want, and I'm speaking a lot to leaders right now, I want us to wake up. Do you know every time something changes in here, enemy whispers if it's if I do anything different with the way we operate the enemy whispers in someone's ear it's your church you say what are you talking about we we got an elder that's moved we've got uh, prominent people in the church that help support it financially move we had great a servant, servant, move out, move. Those are shiftings and they're prunings to get us to grow more. And the reason why you, the, you look around and see that there's a whole bunch of different people in here is because those prunings happen to allow the growth to grow. And what, see, what you don't understand is when good things are pruned off, there's more double, quadruple fruit come. And we don't like the good things pruned because we love people like Vivian. Because when we walk in the door, they make us feel good. They make us feel great. We don't like, uh, 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 I called her Sister Joy because she, she always was dancing and all are full of joy. The Stevens, because they're full of life and full of energy. Uh, Michelle Fox, a servant, whatever you ask her to do, she would do. She was always there, always doing. We don't like for those kind of people to go away because those, one, they help us and support us, but, but they, they're, they're, they're steadfast. And when those shifts go, people freak out. And what happens is, as, as this shift is going and we're beginning to produce and go forward, there's a lot of supposed to go with us And we got to make sure that we hang on to the ones that are supposed to go with us. Instead of all the excitement, all the new faces. I can go over here and there's 12 people, new faces. That's more than that. There's uh, a bunch of ugly faces in the front. (laughs) Bunch of new faces. Glorious faces. New faces. And we can get excited about, oh, everything's great, everything's going good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Where did, where did, where did, where, where did they go? Who, what, what was their name again? And they are crashing because they couldn't handle shift. The other thing that happens is when shift happens, shift causes us, when you produce, 
you, uh, when you prune, then you start growing. When growth happens, there's more, out, there's more energy demanded out of you. So, if leadership is the only one carrying the weight, we get tired because we're overloaded. When pruning goes, the ones that were here and the new ones coming, the ones that were here, they've got to step up and start giving energy to, the, to help support the ones that are coming in because you've got to, you've got to help carry them. Because raise your hand if, you've been, if you're new to this church within the last six months. Hi, 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 hi. All right. That's 25%. All of the ones that are this, within a year. Let's do that. Raise your hands again. Everybody, within a year. You've been a year. Look at that. If that's the case, I, it, it, I can't meet with all of those. You've got to make them feel welcome. And as this growth begins and this goes, and he goes, what does this have to do with everything? Because God is moving. The world is crazy. And they are going to start flocking in. And they're not going to be church perfect people. They're not going to be as great and awesome as your pastor. <laughs> James said plural, pastors. <laughs> they are not going to know our churchies. They're not going to know our Christianese. They're not going to know our language. They're not going to know the things that we do. They're not going to know our formula. They're not going to understand all those things. And they are especially not going to know etiquette. And they are sinners. And they're open with it. Because they have no clue it's wrong. The only difference between you and them, they do it in the public, you do it in the closet. You've just learned to hide it better than them. Now, as they're with us for a while, they'll start learning because you're talking about them, they'll start hiding it. But we don't want to hide it, we want to get it out and get it fixed. Not to condemn somebody, but so that they can have fruit and produce the abundant life that God has for them. So they're going to come in and they're going to be tattooed. Don't get me started. I'll have 50 people leave the church again. I don't have a problem with tattoos. My wife has one on the back of her head. It's the mark of the beast. I've been scrubbing and trying to get it off. They're going to have drug issues. They're going to have alcohol issues. They're going to know, uh, they're not going to know the, the, what perversion is in sex. They're going to think sex is everywhere. Sex is free. It's okay. They see sex everywhere. So there's no, there's no, there's no, they have no hangups with it. They're going to be full of self. They're going to be, uh, 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 desirous of things. See, there's a certain generation that's full of uh, desirous of money. There's another generation that is full of pleasure. Not just sexual pleasure, or that, but pleasure. Just uh, play golf, go do whatever. Everything's about doing something and having fun. Can I tell you, and can I give you a shocker? You are not put on this earth to have fun. I know that's hard to believe. I didn't say that you weren't supposed to enjoy life. I didn't say you weren't supposed to have fun. But you were not put on this earth for fun. So as the shift begins and you're saying, well, what shift are you talking about? Well, the shift of recognizing something's wrong. And then calamities and catastrophes. 
when 9-11 happened, the churches were full. The problem was is they didn't have anything that was real in there, so within six months, they were empty again. The other thing is, is that they did, the, we didn't realize the shift was going on, and therefore we did not take seriously the harvest that was happening. And we were too busy trying to have fun and entertain versus speak to them the truth as setting, getting them set free. So my challenge to us is, is let's recognize the shift. Let's know and understand what's going on. Let's recognize. And if you are part of the shift, you're just coming in here. You're going, why are you talking to them and not us? Because, look, you are important. You're just coming in here, and you're just getting connected. But let me tell you something. You're the first wave. we got to get you fixed and in place and set up because there's another wave coming. You're just the first fruits. You're just the first piece of it. You're just about 10% of what is coming in. And what happens right now is we've got a, what, what took them 30 years to get a hold of, you coming in just now is going to take you 30 days and get you set in place. And what goes, because it's going to be exponential what happens. You are vital to someone. People do not come to a church from advertisement. They don't come to church for any other reason, but they had an issue. Something was going on in their heart, and somebody beside them said, look, I know where the answer is, and I've got a great pastor. Y'all should be doing that all the time. You should be, you should be printing, printing cards. i got a great pastor. But that time, the, the issue, the whatever is you is that opportunity. That's that time to get real with somebody, speak into their life, and get them connected. Now they don't always stay here. They they come and and they get they get touched and they get changed and and inevitably uh, uh, wherever they were called to in the beginning that they ran from, they're going to have to go there. Because my pinky will not look good on his forehead. Right? Kelly, I know you look confused on that, baby. But, see, he, put, <laughs> he puts the members of the body together. And so this is my pinky. It won't even look good on your hand. Much less on Jared's forehead. So in that, if... A pinky's in here that belongs to another church, that's a part of another church. It will eventually go, I'm in the wrong place. But because it is with connection of people that love God, it's going to feel comfortable until it starts having to produce. And then it will never fit. But the other thing is, is... Because you are getting grafted in and not growing in, it's going to be uncomfortable, uncomfortable getting set into place. So don't misunderstand uncomfortable for not fitting and not being the right one. You will always be uncomfortable in the change that goes on in your life. You will always be put out of your comfort zone because you got snatched off the enemy's body and you got put into the kingdom's body. Amen? You are no longer of the father of lies. You are now of, of the father of the kingdom. You are of the father of creation. You are of, of the father, God Almighty. And you're being part, made part into his son's body. And you have a very important role. There's not one piece of my body that is not important and that I don't love dearly, especially this region. Some of you need to quit laughing. You 
are more important than me. When I finish preaching here, I'm going to go over to 5th Street and we're going to have an uh, intro to the point. I'm going to speak of, uh, 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 some more to some people and try to get encourage them to get connected to a body, whether it's this one or another one. I'm going to tell them what we're about. Then I'm going to go home and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, start working on some stuff for next week. Then uh, I'm going to get something set up and tomorrow I got... Uh, three appointments, and I got uh, two projects that I'm working on, and then tomorrow night I got prayer, and then after that I'm going to sit down with a young man and, 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 and try to straighten him out. Y'all pray for me. It's, it's a lot of hard work. And it's <laughs> and the next day is that way, the next day that way, the next day is that way. And then of the 15 people, hopefully I can set up some appointments to get them connected and get them talked to. And then they're going to join and they're going to say yes. And, and then we're going to try to find out what's on their heart. And we're going to try to get them plugged in and get them uh, set up. We're also shifting to our, our discipleship program to next Sunday night. We're trying to get that and uh, get people in because we don't want you to just come sit here and get entertained because I know I am funny and I know you have a good time sitting and listening to me. And I know sometimes even when I tick you off and I'm screaming and yell, you like the funny parts and those that that messes with you and you love that piece of it. But that's not going to make you survive when the devil comes to chop off your head. Or to take your child and get them stuck on drugs. Or to take your husband or take your wife. Or to take whatever from you. Because the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's his whole purpose. None of me making you feel good walking out of here is going to help you in that. All this right here is to do is exhort, encourage, discipline, to correct. All of that is to... To shout into your life something good, something to get you sparked and get you going on, can, continuing on, or ignite something to get you going and this whole body to move. But church is seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days of a year. It's all your life. You did not get connected to the point. You got connected to Jesus Christ, the King, and that is every day. My pinky does not take the rest of the week off. It is on me all the time. And you cannot become the best functioning pinky without being equipped and, and, and taught. And you say, well, your pinky doesn't get taught. Yes, it does. It gets nourishment and it gets uh, 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 the, the, uh, the nervous system goes to it, the muscles, all of it. All of that is the knowledge of the king on my head my brain that goes to that, all that knowledge, my pinky is an idiot. It doesn't know anything. It is a servant to my body. It can't just start dancing, jumping off and dancing around, running around the room. It's connected to do a purpose. That's the way we are. We're connected not to this head, but to this subservant uh, uh, shepherd, pastor, to the head, Jesus Christ the King, and what he directs. Now, yes, it will come through me, it will come through leaders, it will come through uh, 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 teachers, but it's the same way with our body. It, the nerve, through the spine and through the, the, all of the nerves and everything to this, to give it direction on how to do it and when we need to pick up something, when we need to do something, when we need to punch our wife in the face because she's messing with us. Because you got to punch and run. Punch and run, guys. Punch and run, run, run. Because if she gets a hold of you, we were married about two weeks. I love to pick. That's my job. That's who I am. That's what I like. I like to pick, 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 pick on people. If I'm picking at you, I love you a lot. That's why Lorinda knows how much I love her. So I'm picking, and all of a sudden she turns, bam. She hit me in this arm. It went numb for a week. <laughs> I'm in the kitchen. I go, I can't move it. I don't want to mess with her no more. I better hurry up and get out of here before she hurts me. Come on. 
from that day forward, it was tag and run, tag and run. Amen. Every piece is important. Every, every piece is important to become and be and do. And you're the first fruits, and you've got to get equipped. You've got to get established. You've got to know. You've got to understand. You've got to grab hold of this, and you've got to run with it because it is changing. It is shifting. The, the, the oil, the, the, I mean, the, the, the water is boiling, and it's boiling quickly, and it's boiling fast. And debauchery is everywhere. And he said, as in the days of Noah. As in the days of Noah. We are in those days, folks. We are in those days. I know you've heard it time and time again. But the perversion that is on the TV, the everywhere that you go, what is sad is that it's up here it's everywhere and I know you've heard it time and time again I know your grandma and I know your uh, granddaddy I know your mom and dad I know they've been preaching to you he's coming he's coming and 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 all these wrongs and all this bad stuff and all this but I, I, I I wish I could I wish I could get you to do what I asked you to do to just go look and see what Jesus says Go and see what he says, and then go look. Go just look, pull back the blinders, and look. He's coming. He's coming. That's why people are getting uneasy. That's why people are talking to you about their problems more and more. That's why it's becoming evident. That's why things are shifting. That's why things are changing. That's why it's getting crazy. That's why the enemy is attacking. How many know? How many has somebody in their life that they got a, 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 a pretty big problem going on in their life? Raise your hand. That was, that was over three-fourths of the church. And the other fourth was a line because they just, I'm not raising my hand. He asked me to raise it, and I ain't raising it. I, I, don't, I don't like him. I don't like him. I'm just here for so-and-so. But him, no. No. I don't like him anyway. I like, the other, I like her. She pre- I like her. Y'all don't know her. I still got a permanent indention. You want to see? He's coming. He's coming. The birth pains are getting stronger. Let's bow our heads. I wanted to preach on Isaac, but I, I think right here is where we needed to be. Because I'm, I, I'm going I'm to challenge you right here, and then we're going to bring up some people that are going to join the church, and then we're going to go for the day. You can go start your barbecues, take tomorrow off, and relax. But I want you to chew on this while you're eating your barbecue and hanging out and doing. What role are you to play? What role are you supposed to be in this thing? Because if you'll do what I told you to do, you'll look around and you'll see, wait, something's wrong. But if you've been in church for any time at all that you've heard the truth, you already are looking around going, man, ooh, it's it's getting crazy. What, what, are you, what role are you to play? What role are you to do? What, what, what role? And, 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 and I want you to put aside what the enemy and what people have said about you for those that have this complex that I'm not worthy and I can't be because that's a bunch of BS. 
okay? And I know a lot of you don't like the way I talk sometimes, but get over it. It's a bunch of BS. The King of kings and the Lord of lords made you, loves you, and designed you, and he don't make mistakes. I know you do, but he doesn't. And you are vital to someone and to some people. And I want you to realize that. And I want you to take it seriously. And what if you are the last one they talk to? What if you are the last one they connect with? What if you are the one that was to speak to them, to touch them, to help them and assist them? Are you ready to do it? But more importantly, are you willing? And what's going on in your life and what's, what's happening with you right now that's shaking up your world or preventing you from being and doing what you're supposed to be? And I want to challenge you to all the craziness that's going on in your life, stop. And if you are not doing this daily right now and spending time with God reading and praying and worshiping Him, I want you to do me a favor, and I want you to take five minutes, just five minutes a day. And I promise you, it will change to 15 within three days. If you will do it, five days with all you got. Five, min- I mean three, uh, five minutes for, with all you got. Seek his face and cry out to him and say, open up, show me, and take me to where you want me to be. And I want you to grab with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul and all your strength, how much God loves you. And I want you, to, I don't want you to forget what the enemy has said. The King of kings and the Lord of lords says, I love you and I need you and I'm putting you in place. You're vital to this body. You're vital to what I'm doing. I need you. And I want you to grab hold of that. And I want you to have full devotion. And then I want you to say, Lord, show me how and what I'm to do. And then I want you to submit completely unto the house, some pl- completely. And I'm not here to control you. I'm trying to exhort you and get you. I- I'm trying to make you the best. I'm the coach. I'm not the player. I'm not the all-star. I'm the coach. I'm trying to get you to be the best player on the team. And I've got a lot of specialists. It's amazing how many coaches we need now for a football team. But it's a representation of what we actually need in the body. We need all kinds of coaches to sit in place and get people in place and encourage and exhort. Specific skill sets. I want you to grab hold of that. And I want you to pursue it. And I want you to do the other thing is look and see Find out where, when, and how. With all your heart, pursue him. And allow yourself. I hope we didn't sacrifice one of them back there. <laughs> your kid's a heathen. You, he might have got sacrificed. So you better start praying right now. See, see, this is, you can't go to a better church than this. I'm telling you right now. We're all in a serious, great moment with God, touching heaven. And there's levity. Why? Because God's good. And because I'm crazy. I'll do whatever he tells me to do. I may go, oh, crap, oh, crap, oh, crap, oh, crap. But I'm going to be out on the water. Come with me. Come with me. Be all that you're supposed to be. Get into place because it's shifting. You know something's different. You know you can see it everywhere. You can see it everywhere. Something's shifting. Something is different. What are you called to do? Now in that, Being set in place in 30 days, 
If you're willing and if you're submissive and if you're ready to lay down all your life to God, you'll be placed in 30 days. If you take time to get stuff worked out of you, it may take 30 days, it may take three months, it may take three years. But get ready, get in, and say yes because you're needed. I need you. I need you. There's people everywhere dying. I, I, this is serious business. There's people everywhere that are dying, both literally and figuratively. And I want to save them all. And I need your help. Let's get the frogs out of the water. Amen? And let's kiss them, and let's get some princes. Amen? Let's bow our heads. Lord, thank you. We love you. We praise you. And we give you all honor and all glory. Now, every head bowed, every eye closed. Michael, that means you too. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you are not where you need to be right now, Raise your hand. Okay. Head down. Head back, hands back down. If you are, are, are where you need to be, but you're not giving it all that you're supposed to, raise your hand. Okay. Now, dear Heavenly Father, you saw the hands that, go, that went up. Those that raised their hands on the first place, I want you to answer this question to yourself. Are you ready to? And if you are, say yes to him right now. Dear Heavenly Father, we just ask for that first group that they would commit completely to you and they would allow you to set them into place that they're supposed to. Father God, those that are, not, that, are, that are where they're supposed to be are connected and doing what they're supposed to be doing, Father God, and, and are not giving it their all, not fully engaged, Father God, I just pray that, Father, a fire would start in them and they would get right into it just pick up where they left off, our, our Father God, they will increase and allow it to come forward. And I just ask, Father God, that they start mightily moving forward. And Father, as you are shifting and you are changing things, that Father, we quickly get ready for the shaking that's coming. Now, Father God, I lift up every strep throat. I lift up every virus. I lift up every fever. I lift up every person with bacteria in them. I, I lift up, Father God, every uh, 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 respiratory uh, issue. I lift up every blood issue. Uh, uh, what, what else is going on? Every, every uh, stomach issue, uh, allergies with the respiratory. What else? Come on, help me. Migraines, headaches, lung cancer, back pains, obesity. Don't be talking about me. All right. Every one of those, Father, every issue. We come against as a body. We stand in unity and we speak and we curse at the root, the, the, the spirit of infirmity, the spirit of laziness, the, the spirit of rebellion, and the spirit, Father God, of complacency. And we say, be bound and cast down. And we lift up the word of God that says we are made whole and that his stripes and his bruises healed us and made us whole and the prayer of faith heals us. And Father God, we declare that over this body. We will walk in health. And not only will we be healthy, Father God, we will be a infectious with health. People in our office place can't get sick around us. People in our homes won't be able to get sick around us. Father God, when we see one sniffling, aching, or whatever in the stores, we'll watch up, walk beside them, 
touch them and be healed, not need the gratification of the thank you or anything, just walk by knowing that the presence and the anointing of the Most High God has touched them and made them whole, and that's all we need to know, and that's all we need to see. Because, see, the enemy, the spirit of infirmity, that's why Scott and White is so big, that's why that building is so big, the spirit of infirmity is over this land, and we need to take it down, and we need to take it under control. You say, well, I work for Scott and White. It don't matter. We'll change Scott and White into the healing center instead of the uh, sickness center. Amen? We will allow God to be God, and we will, be, uh, uh, we will walk in the power of God. Father, we say yes and amen. Now, let's all stand. I want you to look up to heaven, and in your heart, make that commitment. Now, I'm going to get you to do the hardest thing, and then we're going to bring the three families that are joined. I want you to turn to someone you like. If they're not in this building, you can come, le- come see me because I know you like me. Turn to someone near you, and I want you to tell them what you made a commitment to do with God today. Ah, yeah, you don't like that because now you're held, held accountable. I want you to turn to someone, and whatever discussion you had with God, if it was make a change, whatever it was, I want you to, if it's your partner, if it's someone you love, if it's someone you like, but what would be more challenging is someone that you don't, uh, don't have a great relationship with, tell them what you committed to. I'll tell you what I committed to. I, inc- I in- committed to, to more devotion and, to, and to, to seek people out more and to speak into the life more, Okay? To have more hunger and thirst and passion. He goes, well, you're the pastor. Yes, I know. I need to increase it more and more. All right. Now, have you held held yourself accountable? Huh? Yes. Yes. All right. Are you challenged? Yes. Are you going to do it? Yes. All right. Uh, Will. uh, Angelina. One more. Sierra. Sierra. Come on up here. Yes. Quick announcement. Well, they're coming up. Y'all guys can get Um, right here in the middle. Elders and pastors around them. If you have not registered for Destiny classes and you're planning on going, um, either because you are being rebellious, first of all, stop being rebellious. It's really important that we register right now so we can accommodate the, get the rooms right. If you are, don't know how to register online using your mobile app, Junior and some of the team are going to be right over here by the baptistry after service. They can show you how to do it on your mobile app. If you don't have it, they can get you the mobile app and... If you don't have a phone, they can actually register you. So if you'll please just avail yourself to them right after service, that would be very helpful. Thank you. Well, help us out because we, we're, we're doing Sunday I mean, the classes over there, we have uh, so many can fit in a room, so we're de- trying to determine what, how many are in each class so we can make plans and be prepared next Sunday night. Uh, uh, and then uh, also if we bust out those rooms and, and need a different or more room, we will find that and, and make those plans. So help us out, please. And, and, and please come. Now, the rest of the members come up here and, and get around these folks. Huh? Does anybody else want to join? Yes, please, thank you. All right. So we're supposed to get pizza and all that. Can y'all get that done? Okay, let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for these young folks, Father. Thank you, Father, that you're sending young ones now, not the old farts like me. (laughs) Father, we thank you for the gift that they are. We thank you, Father, for their obedience. Now, Father God, as they come in and they say yes, we just ask that you pour out a blessing upon them that they cannot contain. Father God, just pour it out, money and and favor, and uh, job uh, increases, and, 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 and all kinds of favor on them, Father, for stepping in and lining up to what you desire. We just say, blessed, coming and going. Fill them to overflowing. We thank you and we praise you for it. Now, Father God, as they come and get set into this place, we as the leadership, we make a commitment to you to lead them to 
come alongside them, exhort them, correct them, disciple them, encourage them. We ask that you give us insight to what they're called to. And let us be hammers and chisels and sandpaper and what all that we need to do to form and shape them into what they are, the image that they're supposed to be. Knowing that you are the master craftsman and you're utilizing us to do your work and to do your will. And this is not our will. And then, Father God, we just ask, uh, we say as a body that we commit to them. And, Father, they're committing to us this morning that we will come alongside each other and we will help emotionally, uh, physically, and spiritually in any area that is needed, Father. We're making a covenant today to be family. And we ask, Father God, that you seal that covenant with the blood of your Son. And, Father God, you help us and strengthen us to commit and fulfill that covenant today, Father. We just ask that you bless it. Bring fruit out of it, Father. We just ask for new insight and a new anointing. Give them a hunger and a thirst for your word, Father God. They're young. They're Joshua's and David's, Father God. And let them rise up and be warriors for the kingdom. And Father God, just strengthen them. Let them be excellent with the sword. Let them be excellent, Father God, in moving and operating in your love. Father, we just thank you for these gifts, and we, we bless them today, and we receive them. Father, if you are ever to send them out, let them leave this place the same way that they're coming in. Hands laid on, received, welcoming, welcomed, and Father God, and blessed. And we all say amen. amen. Thank you, guys. Intro to the point over at 5th Street. Hug your neighbor. Tell them you're glad they came today. Tell them you're glad you got to, they got to see you. Be blessed.